Hi there. I'm Claudia Friedlander, and I'm a voice teacher who works with opera singers. I'm also a fitness trainer and an author. Um, I wrote my book, Complete Vocal Fitness, A Singer's Guide to Physical Training, Anatomy, and Biomechanics, because I know that opera singers are athletes, and I wanted to provide them with greater tools so they could train their bodies for peak performance and what it is that they have to do. And what they have to do is amazing. These singers have to be able to project their voices unamplified over an orchestra in a massive opera house, sometimes for performances that last three hours or more. Their bodies are their instruments, and the way that they look is the way that they're supposed to look for what it is that they're able to do. Form follows function. So it's ridiculous to body shame an opera singer, and yet opera singers get body shamed all the time, often by opera critics. Soprano Catherine Lewick recently decided that she needed to speak up about this. Lewick recently performed in Offenbach's Orpheus in the Underworld at the Salzburg Festival. She had given birth 10 weeks prior. Something else to keep in mind about singers' instruments, they multitask. Singers don't just use them to sing, sometimes they use them to do things like give birth and breastfeed. Form follows function, and right now Lewick looks like an opera singer who is also a new mother. Some critics decided to complain about the way her postpartum body looked in a corset. Lua called them out on social media, and her story was covered in the mainstream press. Opera critics shouldn't be commenting on women's bodies, or men's bodies, or anybody's bodies for that matter. If you want an experience where you can go and look at bodies that are going to be aesthetically pleasing to you, the kind that's going to turn you on, I've got some useful advice for you. Check out Pornhub, or go to your local strip club. And I say that with great respect for the people who work there. It's just not what you go to the opera for. Now, if you need a reason to respect singers' bodies beyond the glorious sounds that they make, here's the pedagogical reason. A singer's weight has an impact on the way their instrument functions. The mass, the weight of the viscera, exercises a gravitational pull on all the things involved in breathing. It gives a downward pull on the lungs, the ribs, the diaphragm, and this confers a benefit for sublevel breath pressure. Uh, which is a big reason that they're able to produce the powerful sounds that they are able to make. Every voice is unique. Every body is unique. There's no body composition fat percentage number we're going to be able to come up with and say that's the optimal body fat that a singer should have. They need to cultivate the bodies that are going to perform best for them, and so some are just going to be larger than others. Uh, but if you really want to know whether a singer's body is the right size for their voice, Here's how you can tell. Are they singing? Their body is the right size for their voice. You are looking at the instrument that they're playing. Do you like the way they sing? That instrument is an inseparable part of how they're singing. Don't like the way they sing? Express it in terms of the sound. Don't like the way they look? Keep it to yourself. Nobody cares what you think about singers' bodies. And when you report on it, you demonstrate just how ignorant you are about this process, what it takes to be able to sing like that, and you have absolutely no business reviewing opera. In fact, you don't deserve to be in the opera house hearing them sing in the first place.